Good morning, Mount Olive. Thank you for joining us from around the world. We pray that you've had a good week. It's been quite a week in our nation. The Lord has spared us, and I'm sure God will bring us through. So let's worship our God and praise our God as we now join in worship as our choir comes and leads us in praise and worship.
because of who you are. What a great way to start worship today. That we acknowledge God for who he is. And one thing that we know is he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we give him praise for being the same. He is a provider. He is a healer. He is a way maker. He looks beyond our faults. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. He knows everything, and he loves us anyway. And we thank you that your loving kindness and your tender mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. No matter who's in the White House, thou art God. We worship you. We praise you. We magnify you. We give you glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you so much, choir. Go with me now to the the throne of grace in our morning prayer. God, we thank you today. Thank you for another opportunity to come into your house. Few of us are assembled here, but we know that our congregation is dispersed throughout our community and throughout our country and throughout the world. We thank you that we can come together and be on one accord wherever we may be physically. Our minds are tuned in to heaven. And we know, Lord God, that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. So tabernacle with us today, Lord, wherever we are, and that we may feel your presence and that we may know your power and we may know your sovereignty today. Bless our little church. Bless the church universal. Lord, if you will allow me, bless our nation today. If we ever needed prayer as a nation, we sure do need it now. Pray that you would guide our leaders. Pray, Lord God, that you will bring unity in our country in spite of what appears to be division right now. May the prayers of the righteous go forth to pray for the leadership in our churches and in our nation. We're told that the prayers of the righteous avail is much, Lord. Somewhere there was a, a survey in heaven. If you can just find a hundred righteous, if you can just find 50 righteous, if you can just find maybe 10 righteous men and women in our nation that we can get a prayer through for our nation today. That's your blessings, Lord. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. In the garden. Come on, lift your voice. I come to the garden. I come to the garden. Alone. While. Joy to 
that last verse. I'd like to stay in the garden. I'd like to stay in the garden with him. Go the night around me be morning. But he did. And now we will have our announcements. Please listen attentively. Good morning, Mount Olive. There's a lot happening, so we wanted to take a few minutes and share a couple of things coming up for you and your family. So check this out. Please make sure all announcements for Sunday are submitted to the office by Tuesdays. While we are continuing with virtual worship, our ability to communicate with you becomes more prevalent. We want to be able to keep you as informed as possible of church business and activities. We've been using robocalls and emails, but still, many of you are not being reached. We ask that you make sure we have an accurate phone number and email address so that you can receive robocalls, emails, and perhaps the occasional text. Perhaps you've signed up to have telemarketing calls blocked, which may be blocking our calls to you. Call the church office to see if there's an alternative for you. You can update your information from the members page on the church website, mountolivebaptist.org, or by contacting the church office, 201-489-6888, during normal business hours. If you're in contact with members that say they have not been receiving our communications, please encourage them to reach out so we can correct our records. The Fellowship of Black Churches of Hackensack and Vicinity is hosting the annual Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial Celebration Weekend. You're invited to join in the community communion today, January 17th at 1 p.m. It will be held at the Varick Memorial AME Zion Church, 120 Atlantic Street in Hackensack, and will be a drive through in their parking lot. Tomorrow, the MLK Day celebration starts at 12 noon and can be seen on Facebook Live. The keynote speaker is Reverend Gregory Jackson, president of the Lot Carry Global Missions Convention and our pastor emeritus. The Facebook Live link is posted on our church website. MOBC Sign Language classes for all ages take place every Thursday. Beginners class, 6.30 p.m. to 7.15 p.m. Advanced class, 7.15 p.m. to 8 p.m. No prior knowledge needed. Zoom login information on MOBC webpage. The login info, meeting ID, 857-324-362-2 password 024520 this service is being webcast on our own platform www.mountolivebaptist.live on facebook live and on demand on youtube.com slash mountolivebaptist church additionally we are broadcasting on our own internet radio station www.wmocradio.net Please visit our website, www.mountolivebaptist.org, for all the ways to connect and take part in this worship experience. Don't forget to tell your family, friends, and neighbors around the corner and around the world. Prayer is the core of our Christian existence. 
Join us every weekday at noon for prayer by tuning into www.wmocradio.net. A family that prays together stays together. We invite you to join us every Wednesday for prayer and Bible study. Our senior Bible study gathers at 11 a.m. 1-717-275-8940. Access 375-7039. Join us for our midweek prayer and Bible study every Wednesday night. Prayers at 7 p.m. and Bible study at 8 p.m. The login information is posted on the church website. Our Sunday school gathers Sundays starting at 9.30 a.m. We have virtual classes for every age group. You can go to our website, www.mountolivebaptist.org, and find all the call-in and login details under the Christian Education tab. Applications for the 2021 Coleman Cherry Smith Scholarship are now available. You can go to our church website. There is a link to download the application. All completed applications are to be turned in by Sunday, April 4th, 2021. Well, that's all for now. You can remain current on everything happening by going to our church website, www.mountolivebaptist.org. Thank you for your time. I'm Rhonda Wade. Have a blessed day. Be safe. I want to just highlight a few of our announcements. One is the Fellowship of Black Churches of Hackensack and vicinity will be uh, celebrating our annual Martin Luther King's Day, and we'll begin the celebration this year with a uh, combined communion service on today at 1 p.m. We'll have communion uh, at the Varick Church at 120 Atlantic Street in Hackensack at 1 p.m. It will be a drive-by uh, communion, uh, and then we'll have our annual uh, celebration on tomorrow at 12 noon, which will be virtually, and I will be the spree, uh, preacher for that day, uh, and it will be on Facebook Live. Uh, you can get all the, the link information by going to our website, and it will tell you exactly how you can get on the service at 12 noon on tomorrow. Uh, we'll have our midweek prayer service and Bible class on Wednesday a prayer at 7, and our Bible class will be at 8 p.m. Please join us that we may be in prayer uh, for our community. And let us be mindful of our brothers and sisters, uh, our seniors in particular. This is a lonely time. Uh, the weather is cold and gray, and people are shut in their houses uh, and they're longing for a phone call or longing for uh, just to be remembered. So if you can, reach out to our seniors and others uh, during this particular season. Now join us as Deacon Ralph Shaw will come and make us aware of our sick persons in our church and in our community and lead us to the throne of grace in our morning prayer. Deacon Shaw. Good morning. I want to share with you uh, some of our sick and shut in. Uh, each week we ask you to pray for the healing and restoration and as it is still much needed. Uh, and during the past few months, we have called several persons who are, who are in need of prayer. Although this morning, we want to pray for all the persons that are in the need, standing in the need of prayer. I have a list here of some members who've expressed their request for prayer. Is Sister Cece Atkins asked that we pray for her, for several of her family members stricken by COVID. Two are in ICU. One is on a ventilator, and several others are quarantined, including kids. Sister Beverly Cook, we, she stands in the need of prayer. Sister Shorty Curry, Sister Shani McLean, and brother William McLean, relatives of Brenda Stubblefield, who works killed in an automobile accident. Um, Congresswoman Watson uh, Coleman, who is 
tested positive for COVID. We ask that you keep them in prayer. We pray for the country as being uh, the first president and vice president transition and those who are need who was killed during the ride in Capitol Hill in Washington uh, last week. We ask that you keep them in prayer. Also, the police officers that were killed also. Uh, Sister Rosalind Neville, Sister Reverend Dara Armstrong, Brother Ronald Brembry had surgery, and Deacon Willie Thomas had foot surgery, and Deacon Hodge and his family are in need of your prayers. Let us pray, please. Dear Lord, we come this morning saying thank you. Thank you for another day. A day we have never seen before, but we know it's in your hand. We come knowing that you are able to do all things and all things exceedingly well. We come knowing that you continue to look beyond our fault and see our needs. We ask that you stop by this little house and each person's a member here of Mount Olive. We ask that you would just touch their hearts, dear Lord. Touch them wherever they might be. Dear Lord, we know They are going through, a lot of, of us are going through some real challenges right now. But we know you are a God who is able to handle all situations. You are a God who looks beyond our faults and you see our needs. And when you do that, dear Lord, you continue to extend your mercy and your grace. We ask that you to stop by the families of Mount Olive members, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we had some who have lost loved ones. Sister Marsha, dear Lord, we ask that you would just lift her up at this time, dear Lord. Put your arms around her, dear Lord, and gird her and her family, dear Lord. Meet them at their point of need. We know you are able to do all things, and you didn't bring us this far to leave us. We ask that you continue to bless each and every one of us, dear Lord, and keep us in your keeping power. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Shaw, for making us aware of our brothers and sisters who needs our prayers, and thank you for taking us to the throne of grace in our morning prayer and lifting us up before the Father. Um, I want to now uh, welcome all of our visitors from wherever you may be around the world, and thank you for joining us in worship today at Mount Olive Baptist Church in Hackensack, New Jersey. Um, we hope that uh, something will be said or done uh, during this service that will be a blessing uh, to you as we come together uh, and worship. Uh, we started our service off by singing that song, In the Garden, and we come to the garden alone. And, and no matter if there's thousands of us sitting together, each one of us have to go to the throne on our own accord. So wherever you may be, uh, we pray that you will just have a little talk with our Heavenly Father, uh, and I'm certain that he will hear and uh, answer your prayers. It's preaching time uh, now at Mount Olive Church, and we have a preacher in the house, uh, one of our daughters in ministry, in the person of the Reverend Donna West. 
uh, and we are certain that the Lord has given her a powerful uh, message for us today. So after we will have uh, heard a selection from our choir, the next voice you will hear will be that of the Reverend Donna West. Hear ye her. Amen.
sounds like there are some thankful people in here this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because God, you didn't have to do it. But we're so glad that you did. I, I think there was a part of the song that said, when we think about what you did, God, we're so thankful. Thank you, God. They're just two small words, but there's so much power in them. We, we talk about not having enough tongues to say thank you, God. But with the one we have, we're so thankful. Thank you, Lord. It's another day that the Lord has kept us. Thank you, Lord. He woke me up this morning. Thank you, Lord. You started me on my way. Thank you, Lord. You put food on the table. Thank you, Lord. Clothes on my back. Thank you, Lord. Activity of my limbs. Thank you, Lord. Articulation of my tongue. Thank you, Lord. I really don't have enough time or enough tongues. But with the one I have, I will say, thank you, Lord. Truly, the spirit of the Lord is already in this place, and we give honor to God, to Jesus, our Savior, and to, Holy, and to the Holy Spirit. It is an honor to stand behind this sacred desk one more time. I don't take it lightly, and I know we say Pastor Emeritus, but you will always be my Pastor Jackson. He's the only pastor I've ever known anyway, so. But uh, you're still my Pastor Jackson. <laughs> Giving honor to uh, the deacons, uh, trustees, deaconesses, Mount Olive Baptist Church family and friends, this wonderful choir this morning. And all of you, my brothers and my sisters, this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. There is a word from the Lord this morning found in 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 10. 1 Peter 5, verses 6 through 10. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Verse 10 again. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. If we could title this uh, time that we have together, I'd like to give you the title, A Palace for God. A Palace for God. Let us pray. Eternal and all-wise God, we give you thanks, O God, as we already have for this moment, oh God, for this preaching moment, I ask, oh God, honestly, that you would decrease me and that you would increase, oh God, so that your word may go forth, oh God, in a way that it blesses, convicts, challenges, and changes. God, we ask now that you would be glorified in this moment. Your people would be edified and the devil would be horrified. This is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. A palace for God. Every year in January, for the past five years or so, God has given me a motto that I use throughout the year to watch him move. 
True to form, he has given me another one for this year, and it is already coming to pass. God really is just that good. I mean, when you take him at his word, he is faithful and loving. He is merciful and gracious in keeping his promises. So when I heard him say that no matter what it looks like, I'm still preparing my people to become a palace for me, I must admit that I knew I needed to trust what I heard, but I honestly didn't quite fully understand what he meant. I began reading my devotionals and came across one story that I've read several times. Yet this time it spoke to me differently. I figured out then that this was God's way of showing me what he meant when he said he was preparing his people to be palaces for him. Then, while helping my cousin Malachi with an essay he had to write, there it was again. In Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, he writes as part of a phrase about a palace for justice. And there was that word again, palace. I took it as confirmation that somehow God was indeed asking me to share with those of you listening to this message today from the thought God is getting us ready as he prepares us to become a palace for him. Let me see if I can make this a little clearer. As an educator, and there are a few behind me, I recently enjoyed holiday recess. I mean, I seriously enjoyed those 11 days off. School let out on December, I heard a couple of hallelujahs. Okay, let me, let me repeat that again. School let out on December 23rd, and I breathed a sigh of relief. I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders, especially with everything going on and having to teach during a pandemic. To relax my mind, I happened upon and started to watch HGTV. I mean a lot of HGTV. I guess you can say I've become hooked on HGTV. Two of the shows I'm going to tell you about is Good Bones with Mina and Karen and Hometown with Ben and Aaron. And notice I watch them so much I'm feeling like I'm on a first name basis with them. But they have literally caused me to look at my own house so differently. And while they turn broken down, dilapidated, abandoned houses into homes fit for a king or queen, it's the process of renovation that I wish to focus on for today. As contractors or builders, these partners find homes that no one would even give a second look, let alone want to live in. The houses often have issues with their foundations, walls, floors, roofs, pipes, and a whole lot more. Most of the time, when they show prospective buyers the house as it is, the before, most of the people, including me, can't see what it's going to become, the after. It's almost as if we can't call those things that be not as if they are or will be. All of the houses, all of them have been through so much and are in dire need of repair. And because of that, Mina and Karen, or Ben and Erin, are usually able to get the properties at prices we would consider a steal. Now, of course, the real costs come with the repairs. I'm talking about those repairs that are needed to turn these houses into homes, these makeshifts into mansions, these fit for destructions into you can't believe your eyes constructions. Yes, it's the repairs, the tearing down and the banging, the pulling up and the ripping out, the knocking down and the leveling to the ground where I want us to focus. Because much like these run down, fit to be demolished and never looked at again houses, God takes us through similar periods of demolition and tearing down, breaking up and ripping apart, all so we can become meat for the master and a wonder to behold. But let me not get ahead of myself. Some of us have felt anything but wondrous or fit to be used by God, especially in this last year. While so many of us weren't even sure we'd make it, we definitely never thought that what, that, that what we went through, that that what we endured, that that what we lost, was in any way preparing us for something greater. We know the word says, consider it pure, pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. But I'm asking, what joy? 
and another one, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. But what comfort? And then today's scripture, and the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Seriously, God, suffered a little while? Yes, God, we know what your word says. We know what your promises are to us. We know that your word is true and it never returns to you without accomplishing what you plan for it to do. But with all we've been through, how did, would, could it mean that you're actually preparing us for greater? How did losing my loved one to COVID mean that you were preparing me for greater? How did facing food insecurity for weeks on end mean that you were preparing me for greater? How did losing my job and almost my home mean that you, oh God, were preparing me for greater? And I know that many of you know exactly what I'm talking about because there was nothing about 2020 that seemed to be pointing to God preparing us for greater. But notice how I said seemed. 2020 was rough. Okay, let me say that one more time. 2020 was rough. We lost so much. We hurt so much. We wondered so much. We cried so much. And for so many of us, we prayed so much. Truly, it was the year that we won't soon forget. For so many of us, it will forever be etched in our memories as that year. That year definitely won for the history books. And I don't think any of us who are alive today could have even imagined on January 17, 2020, that the year that began as the year to dream big and see new possibilities would be the year that was, well, you fill in the blanks. Because God really took us through in 2020. And he did it in a way that said to the whole world, now do I have your attention? Now will my name be exalted in all the earth? Will you now know that I am God and there is no other like me? Now, I'm not going to profess to know what is or happening in the mind of God, but we can tell from his actions in the earth that some serious things were going on. There were clearly some thoughts that were surely not our thoughts and some ways that were surely not our ways. And as if 2020 wasn't bad enough, 2021 didn't get off to the greatest start either for so many of us. The pandemic is still raging as medical es experts talk about a surge upon a surge. A vaccine has been created, yet countless numbers of us are skeptical about getting vaccinated simply because we don't trust the government. Then, of course, there's the events of January 6th where we witnessed terrorists storm the U.S. Capitol and get away with actions that so many of us have pe as people of color know beyond a shadow of doubt would have gotten us shot, arrested, tear gassed, called names like thugs and animals, and that's just to name a few. Here we are, my brothers and my sisters, here on January 17, 2021, two days after the birthday of Reverend, Martin, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and one day before we recognize his birthday as an official federal holiday. And while we celebrate Dr. King's birthday in honor of his life achievements and influence as an American civil rights leader, as one who was the chief spokesperson for nonviolent activism in the civil rights movement, I can't help but wonder what he would have to say about the events that took place. Would he still believe that darkness cannot drive out darkness? Only light can do that. Or that hate cannot drive out hate? Only love can do that. Would he still be talking about and believing in his dream for his four little children to one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character? Would he still be talking about we as a people getting to the promised land? Would he still believe that no matter what it looks like, God is still preparing each of us to become a palace for him? And yet in some ways, I truly believe he might. I believe he'd remind us that everything that has happened is truly working together for some greater good. I know the good and the bad, the justice and the injustice, it doesn't look like it, my brothers and my sisters, but everything that has happened is all working together for some greater good. I don't know what it is, but as people of faith, we have to believe that. We have to hold on to that truth. Because yes, it's been difficult. And yes, we are angry still. It's 11 days later and we are still angry. Yes, it hurts so much. 
but we must also take God at his word when he says that he is the God of all grace who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ. And after we have suffered a little while, he himself will restore us and make us strong, firm, and steadfast. It's that same God who has already dried our tears and calmed our fears. And he is still willing and able to do it again. It's the same God who has asked us, even reminded us to cast our cares upon him because he cares for us. This same God who neither slumbers nor sleep is well able, and I know I don't have to tell you, he's well able to turn our impossibilities into possibilities. We just have to trust, obey, and believe. Remember what I told you about my new friends, Mina and Karen, and Ben and Aaron? Well, I watched one episode of Good Bones where Mina and Karen literally turned an empty, overstrewn lot of nothingness that after going through the process of being torn up and dug up and built up, after all that, that same lot turned out to be a two-story, unbelievably incredible house. Why am I, what am I trying to say, my Olive family and friends? I'm trying to tell you that no matter how empty you feel right now, God can come in and fill you. No matter how torn down you've been, God can and will come in to build you into something new. No matter how impossible things look right now, God is the God of making all things possible. Is there anyone who believes what I'm saying? I know everybody says put it in the chat. Just, just put it in the chat that you believe what I'm saying. Is there anyone who has seen, because, you know, I'm, I'm really not a Facebook person, so, you know, I'm going to have to watch it to make sure that, you know. Um, but let, let's just make sure that if you believe what I'm saying, put it in the chat, that you know that the God who is the God of making all things possible is the one that if he did it for someone else, he just might be able to do it for me. I know. I know, I know the scripture says that the devil is prowling about as a roaring lion seeking anyone whom he may devour. And when I tell you he's good at his job, he's really good at his job. He's seeking to devour our hopes and our dreams. And for some of us, he's actually been successful. He's seeking to devour our expectations and our beliefs. So Lord God, please help our unbelief. He is even seeking to devour our faith and the promises of God. But I remind you that if we take God at his word and we remember that although we've had to suffer and although times have been and still are hard and although we seem to live in the divided states of America and although the pandemic still rages, we can know for sure that he who began a good work in us will see it through until the day of completion in Christ Jesus. I know that none of us want to go through. If we could, we would avoid heartache and tough times altogether. But that's not life. That's not even what this Christian journey is all about. And because this is not our home and God is preparing us to go and someday live with him for all eternity, we must not lose heart. We must not allow worry, anger, not even fear to consume us. George MacDonald writes it, George MacDonald writes it this way. Imagine yourself as a living house. God comes in to rebuild that house. At first, perhaps you can understand what he is doing. He is getting the drains right and stopping the leaks in the roof and so on. You knew that those jobs needed doing and so you are not surprised. But presently, he starts knocking the house about in a way that hurts abominably and does not seem to make sense. You ask yourself, what on earth is he up to? The explanation is simply this. God is building quite a different house from the one you thought of. You thought you were going to be made into a decent little cottage, but God is building a palace. Did you hear what I just said? God is preparing you and me to become a palace for him, one in which he himself intends to come in and live. My sisters and my brothers, you have got to get this or you're missing the whole point of the sermon. God does not expect us to consider ourselves as decent little cottages that we would be happy to share with him and have him come and abide. On the contrary, our big God, our loving father, our soon coming king wants to come in, settle down and take up residence in us as palaces fit for he who is our savior and our Lord. So I ask you today, will you let him in? 
Or are you going to make excuses and say things like, that's way too much house for me. That's going to require a whole lot of cleaning. I'm comfortable as a cottage. To be a palace for God is going to require some renovations on my part, some serious renovations on my part. And I'm really going to have to rethink how I walk this walk. Yes, what you're saying might be true. But do you really think that being a decent little cottage is the best you can offer the God who loves you more than you could ever imagine? Better yet, do you honestly believe that it's even about you? Because the truth is, if you're struggling to let God use you and you're finding excuses for why you can't do what God requires or you can't but be what he's asking you to be, then you and I need to realize that God will wait us out. We'll miss out on a lot of opportunities in the meantime. Opportunities where we could have been used for his glory while we had the chance. But believe me when I tell you, what God wants, God gets. So while we've already come through many dangers, toils, and snares, and though the storms keep on raging in our lives, and even if those storms don't cease and if the winds keep blowing, no matter what be tied, we must remember that God will take care of us. He will look after us, and he will keep on preparing you and me to become the type of palace for him where he, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit decide to come and abide. Let him in today. Won't you just simply let him in? And don't just let him in. Let him have full control. Yesterday is gone, and tomorrow may never come. Because after all we've suffered, the most we can do is let the God of all grace who has called you and me to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, perfect us, establish us, strengthen us, and settle us. Be a palace for God today. I promise you, it's the best decision you will ever make. Amen. This is now the time where we invite you to discipleship. Against the many mixed messages and confusing actions of broken people in a broken culture, the message of God's heart rings clear. You might ask, who am I? And the answer is, you are the one so loved by God that he gave his son for your rescue. Consider the price Jesus paid for you and the wonderful reality that to God, you were always worth it. But how have you been defining your worth? I will tell you this. Begin to discard and reject the false messages you've been listening to and begin comprehending the value that God places on you. Pray with me. Father, I can never understand why you would love me so much or give your son for my forgiveness. Your love is unsearchable and your grace is amazing. Can we talk? Thank you for making me your child. If you just prayed that prayer with me and you are seeking to be delivered from the consequence of your sin, then come to the one who loves you. Come to the one who died for sinners. Turn from your sins. Believe in Jesus. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to come into your heart and to wash you clean from your sins. Pray to Jesus. Seek him and ask him to save you. That's it. It really is that simple. And your next steps would be to join yourself with a church where you can continue to learn more about the decision you just made and how you can grow and develop into a disciple ready to be used by God. Call our church office at 201 489 6888 and leave your name and phone number we look forward to having you as a new disciple in Christ but even if you do not join with this congregation do get yourself in a church where you can grow where you can develop and where you can truly become a palace for God amen the church say amen. amen what a powerful word from God through his servant the Reverend Donna West I know 
I don't look like it, but I'm a palace for God. The total, the total makeover is not complete yet. He's still working on me and developing me and shaping me and renovating me. And not just me. You might say, yeah, I know you don't look like a palace, but like, listen, neither do you. But God, there's a room for God in our hearts and in our minds. Thank you, uh, Reverend West, for reminding us that uh, God is able to uh, make us over. Uh, thanks be to God for that word. Let us now continue our worship as we will uh, lift our offering. And you've heard a powerful word. Uh, and we ask you to give out of the bounty that God has given to you, uh, knowing that all that we have comes from God. So if you will go to our website and at www.mountolivebaptist.org, go to the donate button and then give your offering there. Or you can mail your offering to 260 Central Avenue, Hackensack, New Jersey, uh, 07601. And if you live in this community, please drop it off at the church at door number one. Thank you so very much. Thank you for your gifts uh, over the, the years, uh, and certainly during this particular season that we're living in. Uh, now let us continue our worship as we'll have another selection from our choir. Please listen and sing along with the choir if you know the music.
Thank you so much, choir. Thank you again, Reverend Wes, for blessing us. Palace for God. A word for us to live on in these days, in this week, in these times. We're grateful that God can see treasure in trash. God is never through molding us and making us and shaping us if we open ourselves that he may come in and suck with us. Let us pray now. Remember tomorrow, please, 12 noon to join us in Martin Luther King service. Go to our website, find the Facebook connection. Pray for me, the preacher, for tomorrow as well. Precious God, we thank you for the word we have received. Thank you for the preacher. Thank you for all who are here assembled in this worship service. And we pray for those listening around the world. Somebody out there is struggling with low self-esteem and they're, they're not feeling good about themselves. Not smart enough, not handsome or pretty enough. One thing or another in their minds making them feel short. But this word was for you and for me. God can God is the potter. He can put us back together and make us a palace worthy of his presence. Bless, dear God. Bless this worship time, this, this time in this mean and unfriendly world with division and separation and racism and unemployment and red states and blue states. Thank you for the house of worship. Thank you for this palace in the midst of a mess. Thank you for this house, your palace, God's house, where truth is spoken to dying men and women. Bless us now as we leave this place. And may we never leave your presence. In the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray.